Today we're talking about how much cash you need to buy your first home. Stay tuned. Hello there ladies and gentlemen. If you don't know, my name is Aram. I'm a real estate agent here in the Chicagoland area. And if you saw from the intro, today we're talking about exactly how much money you need to purchase a house, both down payment and further expenses. So we're gonna get to the nitty gritty. If you end up enjoying this video, please help me out. Hit that like button so more people can see it. Share it if you find it valuable. Leave a comment so I can get your feedback. I reply to every single one of them, no exceptions. And if you're watching on YouTube, please subscribe to the channel for more content like this and for more even real estate content moving forward, right? Now, without further ado, let's get to the juicy details of how much it costs to purchase a home. Now, I live in Schaumburg. I'm in the northwest suburbs of Chicago. So the price point that I'm going to choose right now is going to be $250,000. I assume most people who need this information who don't yet know it, they haven't purchased a home yet. You're going to be a first-time home buyer, and your price point is not going to be half a million. Nobody buys their first house at half a million, right? You start low, maybe a townhouse, a condo, single family then, and then blah, 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 moving forward, right? So I just used a nice, cute, easy number of $250,000, and we're going to go over the two methods that you can use to buy a home. I'll tell you right away, I don't know if you see the percentages, if you thought you needed 20% to purchase a home, boy, do I have good news for you. You don't need 20%, and I don't think you've needed 20% for a very, very long time. And I'll explain towards the end what the benefits are of putting down 20% and what the negatives are of putting down 20%, okay? So hang in there for the end. Let's talk about the juicy details. There's two ways you're gonna buy a home. I, uh, well, obviously there's the cash option, which don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> right, if you're buying something cash, you need $250,000 plus closing costs. Okay, period, the end. But if you're financing, which 99% of people are, you can do FHA financing, which has a flat down payment of 3.5% down, or you can do conventional financing, which is around 3 to 5% down, depending on your credit score and which loan option you want to go with. The most common one is 5% down. I think you need like incredibly good credit and income to qualify for that 3%. So most, most people who are going to go conventional most likely are gonna do that 5% down. So when I did all my numbers, I did it at 5% down, okay? Now, there's gonna be two to 3% closing costs. Now, FHA has some additional fees associated with it that are, most are built into the loan, but some of them you are paying at closing, so it is a little bit more, but at the end of the day, it evens out. At this price point, your closing costs are gonna be around five grand, which is around 2%, okay, for, for both things. Now. Total, if you could do the math real quick, I did it for you so you don't have to. If you're buying FHA at a $250,000 price point, you need $13,750,000 cold, hard cash, all right? If you're buying conventional, you need $17,500 cold, hard cash. Now, a little thing I do want to mention about the closing costs is uh, in Chicago and in Lake Forest, I believe, is going to be a lot closer to that 3% mark, if not a little bit more because Chicago and Lake Forest, they have a transfer stamp tax that the buyer pays. Usually the seller pays this fee, but in Chicago and Lake Forest, it's $7.50 in Chicago, and I think $7 for Lake Forest, per $1,000 of the purchase price. So for that example, if you want to calculate that, and it would be 250 times $7.50. Whatever that number is, that's going to be your additional closing cost on top of everything else that you normally pay for. So if you're buying in Chicago, the cost goes up. That's just the way it is if you're gonna be living in a big city. Not a big deal, right? So this is the down payments you need, the cash you need to actually close the sale. Now these are a little bit of overestimations. You probably can get away with a little bit less, but I'd rather be safe than sorry. Now, let's talk about how you can even go lower than this and still buy the house. You may have heard of it, closing costs credit, down payment assistance, things like this, right? I don't have much knowledge in down payment assistance, but from my experience, one way or another, you pay for that money. So it's not like somebody's just gonna give you free money to put a down payment on a house. I haven't seen that happen. If it does, send it my way, ladies and gentlemen. I am all ears. <laughs> but here's what you can do that I actually do with most of my clients just because it makes more sense in the current market, all right? You can finance your closing costs into the mortgage, which means you need $5,000 less at the closing table to actually buy the home. Sometimes, if you ask for more closing cost credit than your actual closing cost, you need even less than the 3.5% to buy a home. Uh, one of my clients bought a home in Hoffman Estates 
for 252000 and all the cash you had to bring to the table was $5,500 altogether. Right? Just think about it. $5,500 and he was able to purchase a home. I pretty much told you already about it. So that's the concept, right? So there's ways you need uh, significantly less money to buy a home. If that's what you want, give me a call. We'll figure it out. I'll give you all the details. But we want to keep this video short. So you can finance your closing costs into the mortgage. The way you do this is very simple. Let's say you talk, I, well, I'm your agent, right? Hypothetically. I talk to the other guy and we come to an agreement that you're going to buy this house for 250 That price works for you and that price works for the seller. It's a win-win. It's a fair price, right? However, you're like, Aram, I want to finance my closing costs into the mortgage. No problem, Will. I'll take care of it. So the way we work it in on the paperwork is I write an offer of 255000 but I ask the seller to give us $5,000 back in closing cost credit. Now, one thing you have to be careful of, you can't do that if you're like at the edge where the house may not even appraise for that much, right? But if it doesn't appraise, uh, like if it's only five grand, you're not gonna have much issues. If you're having appraisal issues for like five grand, then you whoo, overpaid out the wazoo, which is a good thing so you can back up, right? <laughs> but I generally just ask around $5,000 and that's more than you need. So that's how you finance it into your mortgage and it raises your payment like $15, $25. So it's not going to break the bank. It's not going to mess up anyone's, you know, uh, monthly budget. But you get to keep an extra five grand in the bank, maybe buy furniture for a new home or make some extra repairs, et cetera, et cetera. So that's what most of my buyers, I'd say 90% of my buyers that I present this option to, they opt with financing their closing costs into the mortgage because more cash in the bank is what you need. So that about does it for the cost of ownership. So you got 13.75 for your FHA and around 18,000 for a conventional 5% down, right? So now that you know the cost of purchasing home, you have to sit down and reevaluate your options. Does it make sense for you to if you are renting? Does it make sense for you to rent? If let's say at $250,000 your uh, monthly payment is going to be around 1600 bucks, right? To make my math easier, let's say currently you're renting for 1500 that times 12 is $18,000, ladies and gentlemen. And if you're renting anything, you need first month's rent and security deposit upfront. So you're gonna need three grand anyway, right? So you already have the money. It's a matter of a choice. Do you wanna uh, actually make the commitment and buy a home? Because it is a commitment, let's not get it twisted. You're going into a lot of debt <laughs> and you're buying a property. So now you're gonna be responsible for everything that goes wrong with it. But you got to reevaluate your option. Is it an $18,000 uh, expense or is it going to cost you less than $18,000 a year to own a home compared to renting every single year? And do you like the flexibility or do you like actually owning your own home and doing whatever you want to do? Now, one fear I get a lot from uh, people who are renting is I don't want to be stuck in one place. Hey, I feel you on that. But that's why you always want to purchase a home that you know for sure that you can rent out at any given time. This way you have two ways to exit. You can sell or you can rent it out. Now, if you're gonna buy a home and you expect to move within three years, don't buy a home. <laughs> you will lose money. Don't do it. <laughs> because as a seller, you have your own, uh, you know, a bevy of expenses that you gotta cover and it won't make sense, right? But if you're gonna be there long term, or if you don't mind renting it out and becoming a landlord, I highly recommend you guys purchase a home. You now know how much it costs. If you want to know like further details, there's a lot of things that I didn't really go over here in this video because I don't want to talk for 35 minutes. But if you're interested, if you're looking at considering buying a home, whether that's now, a year from now, or whatever the case is, maybe you're, you just have, have some questions, hit me up. Uh, if you're watching this on Instagram, send me a DM. If you're watching this on YouTube, send me a, leave a comment. I'll figure out a way to get a hold of you. Or uh, you, I think it's really easy to find my contact information. Get a hold of me and I will answer all your questions. Thank you so much for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe. I'll catch you next time.